in this video we're going to look at another question on leaning rod and how to apply uh, the four steps that are required in order to solve um, almost all leaning rod questions so here we're given that um, figure one shows a ladder AB of mass 25 kilograms and we're going to identify that the, the weight of the, the ladder is going to be 25g and because it's a uniform rod that will act down the, the, the middle or the center of the ladder. <laughs> We're also to, um, told that it rests in equilibrium with one end A on rough horizontal ground. So once we see the, the word rough, we know that friction is present. Um, we know that it is at the point of slipping, therefore friction will be maximum friction, and by formula that will equal to the coefficient of friction mu times by the normal contact force, um, RA, which I call RA. Uh, now, we're also told <coughs> that the ladder is leaning against a wall, so we're going to have a reaction or a normal contact force there, uh, which we'll call RB. The coefficient of friction between the ladder and the ground is 11 over 25, so mm -hmm. value for mu, we can put it here, mu is equal to 11 over 25. We're also told that the ladder makes an angle beta with the ground um, when Reese, who has a mass of 75 kilogram, so Reese is here, he's standing on the ladder, his weight is 75 kilogram, therefore, sorry, his, his mass is 75 kilogram, therefore his weight will be 75 G. Uh, and um, so what we now want to do is uh, complete step one, which is to identify all of the relevant forces. So we have the normal contact force at A, we have the normal contact force at B, and then we have the weight of the ladder, and then we have the weight of, of Reese. So what we'd ordinarily do is we would resolve um, the weight here, we would resolve the weight here. Uh, and we know that the angle right here will be the same as the angle right here. So this will be beta and this will be beta as well. So um, so step one is, is, is mostly completed. So that is our um, force diagram. So once we have that, we're going to resolve vertically. So when we resolve vertically, what we're saying is that the upward forces will sum and equal to the sum of the downward forces because the ladder is in equilibrium. So that means that normal contact force at A, R A, is equal to 25G plus 75G. Uh, we can simplify that and have R A is equal to 100G and that will be equation one. So equation two is when we resolve horizontally. Um, so when we, if we resolve horizontally, then the forces acting to the right horizontally sum and equal to the forces acting to the left horizontally. In other words, um, friction, which is the same as maximum friction, which is the same as mu R A, is equal to R B. But we know from equation one that R A is 100 G, so this would be mu times 100 G is equal to R B. And we can call that equation two. Um, equation, we can simplify that further by recalling that mu is 11 over 25. So that means that RB is equal to 11 over 25 times 100G. And then we call, of course, that 100G um, is 100 times 9.8. So we're going to do 100 multiplied by 9.8 multiplied by 11 over 25. And, and that will give us the value for RB. We will keep the calculator answer for the time being of 431.2. That would be Newtons. Step three will be, or the next step rather, um, will be to take moments about the point A. A, of course, is where the ladder meets the ground. And when we're taking moments, what we're doing is we're setting, because the ladder is in equilibrium, we're setting the clockwise turning effect um, to be perfectly matching the anti-clockwise turning effect. And we're going to calculate the clockwise turning effect by working out the distance multiplied by the uh, perpendicular component of the force acting at that point. 
So the distance from here to here, because it's um, halfway along, uh, that will be two. So that's two times the perpendicular component of 25G, which will be 25G um, cos beta. And then plus the distance from here to here, um, so from, from A to C, as we are told here, is 2.8. So that would be uh, 2.8 times the perpendicular component of 75G, which is going to be 75. And then we let's so if I move this down a little bit. So this will be 75G cos alpha, uh, cos beta. And then we're going to set that equal to the distance from um, A, the distance of AB, which is four, multiplied by the perpendicular component of RB. So that would be four times RB uh, sine beta. So if we, if we simplify, we're going to have the following. Um, so we're going to add two times 25G plus 2.8 times 75G. So 2 times 25 times 9.8 plus uh, 2.8 times 75 times 9.8. And that will give us 2,548 um, cos beta is equal to 4 times RB. RB is going to be 431.2 times sine beta. So we're going to have 2548 over 4 times 431.2 is equal to sine beta divided by cos beta, which is equal to tan beta. So if we simplify that, we're going to have on the left hand side um, 2548 divided by 4 times 4, 431.2. Um, so we're going to have tan beta is equal to 1.477 to three decimal places. So we would want to keep the calculated, calculated values as, as long as possible and then round at the very end. Of course, if we do um, shift inverse. Um, tan inverse of 1.477 then we're going to get um, beta to be approximately equal to 56 degrees to the nearest degree so the the routine that we're presenting here where we're off um, completed force diagram resolve vertically resolve horizontally and then take moments about a we don't even have to make reference to the questions that are provided as long as we followed through these routines for almost all leaning rod or hinge rod questions these this routine will deliver us the solutions that we're searching for so if we now um if we now go to the question find the magnitude of the frictional force um of the of the ground on the ladder we know that we're we're looking for um so for this part we're looking for mu times r a um which is the same as RB, which is equal to 431.2, uh, which is this, which will be rounded to 430 um, to two significant figures. So because the calculation involves gravity, we tend to want to write our final answer to either two or three significant figures. All right, so for the next bit, we have already answered this. We know that beta is approximately equal to 56 degrees. Again, two significant figures. And so state how you have used the modeling assumption that Reese is a particle. Um, this means that his weight um, acts at a given point. And that concludes this video.